We call this Lenten season as a sacred season, a holy season. It is where the root of the roots of the tree gets into the, the soil on the ground. The root is Jesus Christ. You know, we want to get into connect with Jesus Christ in our hearts. And today you see that in the first reading, it's a beautiful verse that he says, he says, Come now, let us set things right, says the Lord. You know, Jesus is kind of calling, come. Let us set things right. You know, it's invitation from him. Even though we are the one moved away, you know, it's like a children make a mistake and they move away, but the, the call comes from father, mother, not from the children. You know, they say, "Oh, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for them to call me." No, 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 no. It's a father who calls. It's a mother who calls. You know, because remember, they are willing to forgive because they are they know better. They have more experience than children. So look at God. God sees this. You know. This, there is a prodigal sons and daughters out there. They moved away, but he's calling with that affection. He said, come, let's set things right. And he's, that call is, you know, just very fatherly. You know, he said, though your sins be like scarlet, they may, be white, they, may, they may become white as snow. We know this because what happened in the last week, Sunday, what happened when Jesus went up to the mountain of transfiguration, what happened? His, his face shined like sun, and his clothes became like white as light, light. So we see that he's actually saying that your sins become like as snow. You don't want to hear that because there's so much snow here. But you see that he says that imagine if our, our, all the sins are like a snow. There is nothing for the devil to accuse us. The devil accuses us because it's a red. The devil accuses us because it's, it's a dirt. And that's where the key is. Like whenever you feel like if somebody is telling you, you're guilty, you're unholy, you're, you're, you're shameful, you're ashamed, because it's not the God who accused. Who accuses us is the devil, because he's called accuser in the Revelation 12, 12, 10 and 11. He's called accuser. He accuses you day and night. But when he comes, he says he smiles at you. But behind your back, he accuses you. And some people take this as a, as, as a compliment. They, they do the work of the devil. You know, they come and tell you nice, beautiful words. But behind your back, they tell things about you. And that's why we say that, you know, when people talk about gossips, rumors, they are, they are the followers of the devil because the devil does exactly the same. When he comes and tells you, he's, he's sweetening you up. But behind the back, what they do? Behind the back, he goes and complains to the father. He cannot be. And we see that in Moses' story. When Moses dead, you know, and staying on the, on the mountain, you know, he could not see. He could not get into the promised land in his highlights. So he, everybody kind of left uh, down to the valley, he was his body was staying there. It says in, in the Jew, the letter of Jew, Sabine, the who comes in to look for Moses' body is the devil, Lucifer. He crawl up all the way to the mountain. And he gets it, he's trying to he's trying to snatch his body, all of a sudden appears and Michael the Archangel. I'm not making this story. It is in the book of Jude, verse thirteen. It says that that is where he say he says not on my watch, he says, said Michael the Archangel. He says, may God rebuke you. Is that a word of St. Michael's prayer? May God rebuke you. That word comes from that spot. That word he tell to Lucifer, may God rebuke you. You know, that with, the, with the commands. And he said, oh no. <laughs> I mean, I have a legal right. He committed sin against God. His body belongs to me. That's what he's saying. But he said, not on my watch. You know, it's a very powerful way of saying because Moses was a holy man, but he committed a sin, and that was his legal claim. Legal claim, you know, he's one of the, the greatest lawyer that God has created. He will fight for you to claim your soul. That's what the devil does. But that's why we pray St. Michael's prayer. Now, you know, these days, you know, thank God the bishop allowed to do this, to pray the St. Michael's <laughs> prayer because he's going to claim all your body. Because remember, we have committed sins. Alright? He will claim because he knows, because he's, he's, he's a he knows the law. That's why, if you imagine when this temptation time, what, what, what he comes up with. He, he tempted you with the three temptations with Jesus himself, the Son of God, with the law of the Lord, with the word of God. Because he knows the Bible better than you. And that is why he's a legal, legalist. The greatest legalist God has created. The only way to defeat him is to St. Michael. That's why we need to pray to St. Michael in this time. Because otherwise, he will claim your body. 
because we commit sin through body, soul, and spirit every single day. That is the temptation Jesus faced. So that's why we need help. For Archangel St. Michael, so we need to pray. He will be awake, this is at end of day. So we need to pray to him. And that's what God says. He's calling us. But are we ready to believe? He says, if you're willing and obey, you shall eat the good things of the land. But if you refuse and resist, the sword shall consume you. For the, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. So if I obey and willing and come back to God, to come back to church, to come back to God's love, you're going to see that our life starts to become peaceful. But if not, the sword means it is the tribulations. The tribulations that happen. Remember, there are three tribulations, they say. There's tribulation in our life, the tribulation that's going to happen to Jerusalem, and the great tribulation that God predicted and that's going to happen. So, but first is me, it's going to happen. In me and my family. So the, if things are happening in me, the soul is coming at me. Because if not, there will be peace. Whatever happens in the, around in, in my life, whatever happened in my family, whatever happened in the city or the state or the country or the world, there will be peace for you. Remember Jesus said, glory to God in the highest and peace to those people who received grace. So that's what we need us. So he's asking, come. Let us set things right. <coughs> Says the Lord. Though your sins may be like a scarlet, they may be become white as snow. Though they may be crimson as red, they may become white as wool. 